In most cases, components are created by developers. This includes the component registration and content modeling in XM Cloud, as well as writing the code for the head application that includes the markup of the component. The work is usually shared among XM Cloud specialists and application developers. In this tutorial, I would like to go with you through all the tasks to be done by an XM Cloud developer to create the basis for a simple component, the service teaser component. In the last video, we created the text teaser component using the component builder UI without writing a single line of code. However, for a lot of requirements, developers are needed to create components. To progress building the home page, we continue with the service teaser component. The services teaser component consists of a wrapping element that contains a collection of six services displayed as a tile. Each service shows an image or icon adding, stating the service name and a short description for each service. Each tile is linkable to a service detail page. In mobile design, all information is stacked underneath each other. To model the content, we need to take a look at the content architecture. There is a parent page underneath home as an entry point to the services area. The child pages will contain content about each dedicated service such as web design, web development, product management and so on. Ideally, we put all teaser information on the services page themselves. This way, we can reuse the content in a more efficient way. So, we need to create a content model for the services overview page, the services detail page containing the fields we need for the teaser, and the services teaser data source as well. Before we start, let's get an overview about the next steps. So, what we need to do can be divided into two main tasks. First, register the component and create the content model. This is what happens in XM Cloud as configuration. And second, code the component in the head application to provide a markup. To register a component and create the content model, we need to go through the following steps. Create or reuse an existing module, clone a rendering, create or adjust the content model, install the feature to the site, we need to test the component and we will also serialize the created items. To code the component, we will start to scaffold the component code, code the business logic, style the component, test it locally and then deploy it. Considering the skill sets I see in a lot of projects, there are application developers that do not know Sitecore XM Cloud and there are XM Cloud specialists. In those cases, the work can be split exactly with these two areas, meaning the XM Cloud specialist can prepare the content model, the rendering item, and everything that is required as XM Cloud items. Once done, those can be deployed to an environment the application developer connects the app to. The application developer can focus on building the application. So let's start with the first part. We want to create the content model for the pages. Therefore, we use Content Editor. Within the content tree, we navigate to the templates, project folder, and here we find all templates that have been created during the site collection creation in episode three, where we set up the site collection and site. So let's use the insert options to create the page templates one by one. We create a new template and name it services overview. As a base template, we switch from the standard template to the page template of the site collection which is located in the same folder. Next, I can select the location where the template should be stored. I select the company dev folder and hit the next button again. The template has been created for me and I can close the dialog. Inheriting from the page template provides a lot of common features required for a page. Next, we create a template for the services detail page. Also, here we select the page template as a base template. The service overview template does not require any additional fields besides the inherited ones. But for the service detail template, we create a section called teaser. The first field in this section will be the teaser heading and it will be of type single line text. We also need the teaser description and this will be also of type single line text as we do not expect a lot of text here. 
Last but not least, we have the teaser image field and this will be of type image. For the image field, we want to provide a source as we want to guide authors later on where to find images for that site. As the source field supports queries, we can query and use the dollar site media token which represents the media folder of the site context. So pretty handy. If we did not provide that source, the author would always have to navigate from the site core root node, which can be confusing on the one hand, but also means unnecessary clicks and the chance that authors store images in locations that are not meant for this purpose. We could also provide a dedicated path here to a folder that contains service teaser, but we leave that for now. Next, I assign the icons. Therefore, I navigate to the configure tab and click on the icons button. We can see the recently used icons and also go for more icons. Opening the icons dialog can take a while when opening for the first time. Here we can choose now from different libraries. I'm going into the office library and here I choose the piece icon for the service detail page. The same I do for the service overview page. Now the icon dialog opens faster as it has been cached. I go into the office library again and choose the pieces icon for the service overview page. We also want to guide the authors to create only service detail pages underneath a service overview page. Therefore, we select the service overview page and navigate to the builder options tab that is only available for template items. Here, I create the standard values that are usually meant for default values when an item is created. But I can also use that to define the insert options. On the standard values, I navigate to the configure tab and assign the insert options. Here, I remove all the other templates listed and add the service detail page template from the templates project company dev folder. First task accomplished. Next, I want to create a module. A module bundles features in XM Cloud that are represented as items. This way, we get support for staying consistent when naming folders in different areas. But this also helps us administer our sites as we can install modules to sites. Therefore, I navigate to System, Settings, Project. Usually, it is good practice to create a module folder below the project folder that is named after the site collection I created this feature for. I have done this in a previous episode already. In order to create a module in the company dev folder, I need to use the insert options from the project folder. Therefore, I do a right click on the project folder and select module. A wizard opens. I name the module services. I select the folder I want to create the module in, which is the company dev folder. I can select the areas where my module will have files in. So I only need the templates, branches, meaning branch templates, renderings, placeholder settings, and that should be it. So I can deselect the others. The scaffolding action is only needed for the site setup, meaning whenever I create a new site, I can install this feature optionally. I can also install the feature later at any point in time. Tenant is by the way an old term that is now a site collection. I click the proceed button and the wizard starts creating folders and the required items. I can see now that the module item has been created. Next, let's create the rendering, meaning the item that registers the component with XM Cloud along with its data model. Therefore, I navigate to layout, renderings, feature, Headless Experience Accelerator, Page Content, and I choose the Promo Component. XM Cloud supports mean creating new renderings by simply cloning or copying an existing one. So I do a right click on the Promo Component and choose Scripts and Clone Rendering. I'm supported by a wizard again that asks me for all necessary information. I provide the component name, which is Services Teaser. I select the module I want to associate the component with, which is the services module I just created. 
Next tab, I can choose whether I want to inherit or copy the rendering parameters of the promo component. Here I want to stay in full control and therefore copy the rendering parameters. On the next tab, you can select whether you want to copy the fields from the template of the promo or if you want to inherit those. We select to make a copy as we want to be able to delete them. This would not be possible when selecting the option to inherit those. By pressing proceed, the promo component is now cloned. Let's have a look on the created rendering item. As mentioned earlier, the rendering item registers the component with XM Cloud. Here, all connections to related items and resources are configured. I named the component services teaser with a blank. It's always good to support the marketer with good readability. However, the application developer will want to avoid blanks. Therefore, we set the component name to service teaser without blank. Further down, what we can see is that the data source template location has been set so the rendering knows what content model can be expected, which is the services teaser template that got created with a cloning process. Also the data source location of the content items, so the later content that will be associated with the component has been set using the dollar site and dollar shared site token. This way we make sure that the data source is always expected under the site context data service teaser folder or the shared site context data service teaser folder. This has all been done for us, but it's good to know how everything comes together. As the rendering item looks fine, we can navigate to the newly created templates. Going to Templates, Project, Company Dev, Services, we find the Services folder and the Services template. Taking a look at the Services template, we can see that the fields have been copied from Promo. As we need other fields, let's just delete all of them. After refreshing the item, I can create a new section called Services. Within the Services section, I create the Services field as a multilist. The multilist should be limited to the Services item of the particular site. So, if you don't know how to create the query, you can copy it from the rendering item. So, let's go back to the rendering item and copy the query for the site and the shared site context. By the way, the insert options and standard values that we had to create for the page templates have been already set with the clone rendering process. Let me copy the data source location queries and navigate back to my template to paste that into the source field. There are a few adjustments I have to make. First, I can simplify the query a bit by just using the path home slash services instead of data. Additionally, I want items of type services detail listed. And I don't need the part for the shared site as of now, so I can remove that. Now I can save the template. Now, before we can install the new feature or module to the site, let's have a look if everything is set up correctly. When we navigate to the module we created before under System, Settings, Company Dev, Services, we can see the module item and underneath two items have been created. Add Available Renderings and Add Service Data Item. The Add Item Action items are structured like that. Into the location in the target site, for example, available renderings item, we create a new item of type available services rendering item, which is a branch template, meaning a hierarchy of items that has been created on the clone rendering process. This item will be created with the name services. We could also set what fields should be prefilled, but that's not needed in our case. So the add available renderings item looks good and it will at the end add the component to the toolbox. The add services data item looks also good. So we add to the data folder an item of type services teaser folder template and give the name services teaser. So as you can see, a module contains a building plan, what items need to be created at what location to make the feature work. This is especially useful when you administer multiple sites. Now that we checked everything, we can install the services module to the site. Therefore, I select the site item, right click and select the script add site module. When starting the script, we can see a list of all available modules that have not been installed to that site yet. 
In our case, I select the services module. So we keep that checked and confirm with the OK button. The module installs now all items required for the services feature. So there should be now a folder called services under the site data folder and we can create service items from here. That looks good. And when we look into the presentation available renderings, there is now a services item as well where the services rendering has been added. So the new rendering appears in the toolbox of pages and experience editor. Under home, we need to create now the services overview page named services. We could have created an add item action in the module for that. As we do not have an insert option for creating service overview pages, I click on insert from template and select the services overview page template. I name the page item services. We can add now a services page underneath using the insert options. Let's quickly do that. I name it web design. We set the heading as well to web design. Hmm. Wouldn't it be easier to just use the item name as default for the heading field? That would actually save time. And remember standard values? So let's go. Back to the services detail template, I create the standard values. I put the dollar name token into the teaser heading field. This way you can prefill the item name into the heading field when creating a new service detail page. Back to the content tree. Let's add another service page. I call it product management. This is a much better user experience now. So let's add some more. I add a page for marketing, one for graphic design, a page for user experience, and one for web development. That should be enough for now. Back in the services data item, I can create a new services teaser data source item. I name it service teaser homepage. Here I can see that the newly created services pages appear in the multi list to be selected. Let's select all of them and save the item. Let's check if we can also use the component in pages or experience editor. When opening the pages editor, we find the newly created component in the toolbox or component list under services. I can drag the component onto our page and now I'm asked to create or select a data source. Please note that the location I can create items in is limited. This guides authors to manage content in the right location and reduces their time spent on content creation. I assign the data source I created in content editor before. Now we see an orange box stating that we are missing the React implementation. And that is true. We have not implemented the component yet. This is what we do in the next episode. To wrap up the configuration work, we can serialize the items from the local XM Cloud instance or the remote instance to our source code repository, depending on where we created the items. We configured the serialization in episode 5 of this tutorial series. In Visual Studio Code, we can open the terminal and create a first branch. Therefore, we use the command git checkout using the parameter b and naming the branch services features. Now we can pull all items from the remote or local instance using the command .NET site cursor pull, passing the name parameter that represents the name of the environment configured to be pulled from. In our case, that's dev. Now, all new items are pulled and serialized as files into our source code repository. Let's stage all changes and pass the comment creating items related to service component. We commit and push them to the branch. Now the application developer can take over. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover SiteQuiz channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.